What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Part 6. Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. This is kind of stupid. And I've never been one to believe the theory that we're all living in a simulation. But I was driving to the grocery store and I turned my head to look down a road I usually pass on the way there. And it looked for a split second like a dark void. Kind of like if you clip through the bottom of a video game. I blinked, looked again, and all was normal. Just like if it had buffered and then loaded, I'm sure it was just a trick on my eyes. But maybe it was more... I go a different way to the store now. Account 2. Woke up next to a woman twice my age that I have never met before. I was quite shaken up by it, and she harassed me for a while after. Sadly, male victims of rape don't really exist in most people's minds. When I told friends then, I got a lot of jokes about the scratch on my head. Evidently, I had fallen that night. Again, no recollection. So, of course, the story goes, she clobbered me on the side of the head and had her way with me. I've never gone to shot night at the bar since. Still fucks with me any time I see the woman around, I still work in the service industry. And years later, she sat down at one of my tables. I had to pass it off on someone else. Account 3. Me and a friend from high school were walking through the woods late one night, just talking shit. We were kinda lost. Not too far from home, but not quite sure where we were at the same time. All of a sudden, it felt like we had been walking for hours, and almost like we just started walking at the same time. Kind of a bad explanation, but all of a sudden we were back on the trail, and like a block from his house, my friend aptly said, Do you ever feel like you just glitch through time sometimes? Or something like that, I was like, yeah. And we parted ways, IDK, shit was eerie. We were probably just tired, but I've never experienced that since LOL. Account 4. Once I was walking home from the bar, crossing a local park, got the most law and order SVU fear feeling. No other way to describe it. Immediately turned around and proceeded to get shit-faced, waiting for someone to walk me home because I was not going to go back through there alone. Later on, a serial rapist was found to have targeting my neighborhood for years. Saw his picture later and realized I'd met him before. He'd been asking for tips about the neighborhood because he was thinking about moving there after a divorce. Last two attacks before he was finally caught on a security camera or something were on my block. I live first floor. I think about it all the time. Not as much for me, but how fucked up it was that he was preying on local women for so long and there was DNA evidence, just untested and lost until one woman fought about it. System is messed up and the world is scary. Account 5. I'll never forget the time I was at my old apartment complex pool with my family and seeing a middle-aged dude get real close and comfortable with a random kid who wasn't much younger than me. I was about 7,8, so the details are a bit fuzzy, but from what I can remember, the man was in the pool with his arm over the kid's shoulder asking him where he lived where he went to school, how old he was, etc. Just a bunch of really weird personal questions. I didn't think much of it. Then I had just assumed the man was being friendly, but looking back on it, I'm positive that that man was a predator. I can also recall the kid's older sibling leading him away from the man while giving him a disgusted look. Scary shit when you think of what could have happened if the kid's sibling didn't take him away. Account 6 I was in our college library before class started, and I wanted to go to the restroom to fix my hair. I hate when other people are in the restroom, because I'm a shy person. I was walking to the restroom when I barely notice a girl with long black hair and a backpack in front of me walk in, so I was obviously annoyed. She walked in right before me, so I was expecting her to leave the door open for me, but she didn't. When I get to the door right after her, I try and open it, but I can't. She's pushing the door closed. It's not locked. I can see a little bit inside, and so I start laughing because I'm just so shocked as why this stranger is pushing the door closed. I let go after a while and turn around to the whole library, kind of like, am I the only person seeing this? And once the door shuts all the way, I push again, no resistance. I go inside and look behind the door, and she's not there. I assume she's hiding in the stall, so I check them all as well. She is nowhere. 
I immediately realize it must have been a ghost playing tricks on me. For some reason, I am not scared at all. I stay in the restroom and fix my hair and get out. I was so tempted to ask the school facility for the security footage of me pushing the door to see what it looked like, but I was too scared of their reaction. Account 7. I was walking in a good neighborhood at about 10 p.m. with my pup. Pup is very friendly. There is this light coming from the playground. Meh, whatever, keep walking. My pup notices gets uneasy, keep walking, and I hear someone barking. At my dog. Like, what? Anyways, I walk a little faster because my pup is growling and upset. And at this point, I'm creeped out and the light is moving closer to me. Guy comes under the street light and is following me, agitating my dog by barking at him. So I'm like, hey, please stop. He starts crossing the street towards me, and I start walking even faster while my dog is on his hind legs just trying to get to this guy. Like I said before, my pup is very friendly, and I've never seen him act like this. I yell, stop or am going to let go of this leash. He stops coming towards me but walking parallel with me, asking what my name is and talking gibberish. My dog is 80 Alobis, now 120 fully grown. I can barely hold on to him and pull him away. IDK where the dude went, or what he was doing in a playground kind of late at night. I asked around about the dude. Heard he's a retired deputy that just gets drunk and hangs out in the playground late at night to ward off hobos. Yeah, okay. Account 8. Our neighbor is notoriously known for having frequent fights, so frequent that almost every night you'd hear them screaming their lungs out at each other. One night I was outside minding my own business, and I heard them starting another fight. I rolled my eyes in the first few minutes as it was about the husband being drunk again. Few more minutes pass, they then started throwing stuff around their house. A few more minutes pass, I heard the wife ask a question angrily. You did what? She yelled. Now I just assumed that the husband did something really bad that must have pissed off the wife. Everything beyond that were more inaudible voices, so I didn't exactly see the entire picture of their fight. Not until the wife started screaming in fear. She started yelling, get away from me and let me go. I started to become concerned as the screams continued and thought I should call the cops, but apparently someone did it first. So a police car pulled over in front of their house. I assumed it was a noise complaint from another neighbor. When the police came to inspect the fighting and yelling completely stopped, I thought it was over. A few days later, after I came back from school, I saw three police cars in front of their house. I saw the man in cuffs and was arrested. At first, I assumed that the wife had reported his husband for domestic violence. As I got into our house, my parents were looking through the window and I asked them what was going on. My mom said that she heard from a fellow neighbor of ours that the man had murdered his wife and chopped her up. I was completely shocked and also creeped out by the news. More so when our local news on the TV had a report about it. The man had apparently hid the body parts in their washer room and covered it powdered soap. It was shocking knowing that I lived next to a psychopath. Although it does make it a good story to tell in a group of friends, but it still creeps the shit out of me. I sometimes would imagine if the guy went on a rampage, it was literally the closest I got to a real-life horror movie. Account 9. Two important notes to make before the creepy instance. 1. We lock our three cats out of our bedroom at night because they get loud, annoying when they want attention, to the point that they wake up our baby. Baby sleeps in her crib in our room. We always do a head, count before bed, to make sure that they're all out of the bedroom to save us from getting back up to kick one out. Two. Once in a while, one of the cats will slip into our bedroom closet in the daytime when we open the door to grab a shirt or something, and they'll get locked in until we hear them scratching crying, banging against the inside of the closet door. Scary event. One night when my spouse and I were in bed and about to fall asleep, we hear something banging against our closet door. I ask him if he did the head, count before coming to bed, and he confirmed that he did and could have sworn all three cats were in the living room. We're both immediately kind of creeped out. My spouse gets out of bed and opens the closet door. Nothing is there. He leaves the bedroom to check the rest of our apartment, and all the cats were curled up together on the living room couch. He returns and checks the closet again. 
just in case we mysteriously got a rat or something, but there was nothing there. After he came back to bed, we cuddled up and were about to fall asleep again, only to be jolted up by a louder, longer banging against the closet door. At that point, we're both ready to shit ourselves. We both get up and thoroughly search the closet together. There's nothing. I get the baby back to sleep. The banging was so loud it woke her up. We get back to bed practically intertwined because we're creeped out, but we're also so exhausted that we start to fall asleep again. But of course, what happens once again as we're just about to fall asleep? More banging against the closet door. It's a little lighter this time, but now the doorknob is rattling too. Neither my spouse or I move, I whisper to him. Should we just stay in bed and hope for the best? Out of pure exhaustion, he said yes. Despite being scared, I'm still beyond tired. And in my sleepy haze, I look towards our closet and sternly whisper, This needs to stop now. We are tired and we're going to sleep. After that, we fell asleep and there were no more disturbances. There haven't been any major activity since then either. Some occasional odd sounds and concerning shadows out of the corners of our eyes. But nothing major like that night. Account 10. I was working at a gas station graveyard and this dude speaking broken English is wandering around the store and I'm standing there. It gets uncomfortable, like weird tension. He walks around to where you can get to the register. Still quiet, not a word being said. So I pull out my knife, knowing this is going to go somewhere bad. Finally, I look at him, and he looks at me. He laughs and does a finger gun. Laughs and walks out, I'm convinced he was going to rob me, but size me up and didn't think he was worth it. Not in a, I'm a badass way, but he was a small, skinny dude, and I was a fat guy with a shaved head, and I had a knife in my hand, IDK, but that messed with me to this day. Also, the time I tear gassed myself, edit chlorine gas. Account 11. I used to take different routes home from work, where I worked third shift as a cashier, stalker, one night on one of the routes home, I thought that I saw the grim reaper in a field. It just stood there, leaning on the scythe and watching me drive slowly past. I was very freaked out. So much so that as soon as I got home, I told my best friend about just in case I died in the near future. A couple of weeks later, I was taking that route home again and fell asleep while driving, ended up dying in a head-on collision with a dump truck after I came out of a week-long coma Induced after 16 hours of surgery to save my limbs and life, my buddy asked me if the route I took home was the same one I saw death on. Freaked me right out, even in a heavily medicated state. Account 12. When I was younger, I used to have these dreams where the sky was on fire, but it's the wrong color and I was always running from something with other people into the mountains. I still have it occasionally. It's weird. I never remember my other dreams really at all but I remember this one. Account 13. When I was seven and my sister was four, a neighborhood kid who was much older than us, probably around 11 or 12, convinced us to let him suck our toes in our backyard playhouse, claiming that it had felt nice and a prevented foot fungus I knew something was off to begin with. But for some reason, we went along with it. When I mentioned this to my usually even, tempered dad a couple hours later, he got super ticked off and went outside where the kid was still playing and told him to leave immediately and never return. I was very confused about that day until years later when I realized that what he did to us was technically molestation, sexual assault. After this dawned on me, it has been difficult to think about without feeling sick to my stomach. Account 14 one time when I was washing dishes, and the way it's set up is when you walk in the door, the kitchen is to the left. So if you're washing dishes, your back is facing the door. So I was washing dishes, and I hear the front door open locks and everything. So I turn of the sink since it thought me dad was home early. I turn around, and I see a tall man with a black suit and a top hat. He was walking into our hallway. I was so scared I didn't know what to do. When he started to walk through the hallway, he kind of disappeared, just like faded away. I couldn't wash the dishes without looking behind me every few seconds. I just felt like he was going to come to me again. So I asked my brother to just hang out in the living room while I finished. Sometimes I feel someone behind me while washing dishes and think about it again. It was a horrible feeling. 
Account 15. A few years ago, I was wondering about a guy I used to work with who was painfully shy. I was the only person he talked to, outside of his family. Glancing at the clock, I felt guilt that I'd not kept in touch since I left that job. Ten years before. No idea why he came to mind. But when I read the obituaries that day, I saw that he had passed away. His burial was at the exact moment that he came into my mind.